Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're taking a look at the Steingraber Lamia. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that the last name of Alex Steingraber correctly. Um, this is a really cool little custom folder from him. It is his first folder, and uh, I'm very, very excited to have my hands on this. He has not made many of these, so they're going to be kind of scarce at the moment. Best of luck for you if you are searching for one, but let's go ahead and get into what I like about it. All right, Steingraber Lamia size comparison time. So we'll go ahead and start off with some more common knives that you guys may have just laying around. Um, we'll bring in the Victorinox Bantam slip joint knife there. We have the Victorinox Classic, which everyone should have in my opinion. They're cheap and they're fantastic little knives. Really, really great addition to your EDC. And the Openel number eight. This one has a pocket clip, but is otherwise completely stock. So. Obviously, it's a little bit bigger than the um, Steingraber Lamia, and my camera angle is a little weird, so it looks a l like maybe a quarter inch larger. It's really not. They're very, very similar in overall length. Next up, just some popular higher-end knives. The Grimsman Norseman and the Koenig Arius. So you can, you can kind of see there, both of those are obviously significantly larger than the uh, Lamia, but interestingly enough, um, grip length to those two and this one is very very similar last up. We'll do some customs in the similar price range um, Oz company Roosevelt and the Clark 3.8 inch gun stock obviously significantly larger um, but Again somewhat similar grip length actually uh, this Clark's a little well. No, it does have that hump there so Similar grip length, the grip on these two is actually larger than the Clark, uh, but not by much. First thing I like about it is the clip contouring around the lock side scale screw. So this makes it to where you can disassemble the knife without having to remove the clip first. Nice little touch, sometimes clips get in the way. So it shows he was thinking about that. The clip itself is also very, very good. Um, it's fairly narrow and it sits pretty deep. You get a, a, about that much of the knife sticking out of the pocket. Um, I don't love how it, it gets a little taller right here than at the back, but you know, part of the part of the design, I guess. Sits in the pocket really well. The retention's pretty good. It's it's a very solid clip overall. Um, milled clips are really hit or miss. This one's like 80% there. It's pretty solid. Next up is the blade. The stock is pretty thin. The grind is really really tall on the blade. It's the entire length or width of the blade, I guess. Um, so a very high grind. It's super, super thin behind the edge. Fantastic behind the edge thickness on this. And the steel itself is really good as well. It's CPM crew wear on this run. He may do different steels in the future. I'm really not sure to be honest. Um, but at the moment, this one's pretty good. Steel is CPM crew wear. Fantastic tool steel. Uh, the card that came with the knife said it was ran at 64 to 65 HRC. So very, very hard steel and with the grind and everything it it cuts amazing it's it's a super super slicey knife he may do different steels in the future i'm not sure but at the moment this one's in crew wear and it's extremely well done next thing i like is the opening hole on it so it's a little bit wider than like your standard spider hole right um it is not i might have just been blocking that i apologize if i did so you can kind of see there it's about 50 percent 30 percent somewhere in there uh wider not quite as much as the Roosevelt. I wish it were about as long as the Roosevelt. I think it would give a little bit better access if you wanted to flick it from um, right here-ish. Um, but you can still very much spidey flick it. It works just fine. It works really, really well for thumb flicking too, which is probably my preferred method of opening it. And because of the slightly lighter detent, which can be, it's not bad detent, but it is lighter. Um, you can slow roll it really, really well. So the opening hole overall is super well done. It's a really good decision on that, in my opinion. Um, I really like that. Next thing I like is the choil area. You can see here it slopes just directly down into the handle. It's extremely, extremely well um, integrated into the design. Somewhat like the Roosevelt as well, where you can see it's just kind of built into the finger choil. Um, most standard knives are like that. You can see there's still prominent you know, outcropping. And I think this is definitely the way to go as far as integrating a choil into your blade and not messing up the ergonomics at all. Super, super well done. Probably one of my favorite features of the knife, honestly. Next up is the lock bar access. So you can see you have pretty good access to that lock bar and the tension's fairly low, which I personally like a lot. I really don't like super hard lock bars. It can really, really get at your thumb, um, especially when you're 
playing with your knives. I know people are like, oh, you don't fucking play with... It, I sit there at a desk all day and I, I flick this thing constantly. So it's really, really good for me personally uh, to have the lock part tension be light so that I can sit here and do this for 20 minutes and there won't be any fatigue on my baby thumb. Next up is the milling. So it's really subtle, but it's all the way around kind of shadow boxing or framing the scales. Uh, framing is probably the better, better word to use there, but it's just these slight little steps. Um, hopefully you can see that pretty well. It's very, very subtle. I like it. It keeps the design minimal while adding some more interesting elements and it frames the design really well. Last thing is just the overall fit and finish. The knife is really, really well done. I like it a lot. Um, I don't have any fit or finish issues with it at all, except for some uh, issues with the lock interface, which we'll get to later. Also completely forgot the branding on this knife. So you can see SK right there for um, Stein Grabber Knives and CW right here for Crewware, uh, which is the steel that's being used. But when you open up the knife, both markings are hidden by the scale. So it's a really, really cool touch, similar to how the Roosevelt does it. Um, little Oz logo right there. Pop it open and it's gone. So I really, really like that. Actual last thing is the price. Um, this is $600 and I think it is worth every penny. Um, for a custom knife to be $600, you're usually giving up a lot. This, you're, you're really not. You're getting, you know, good fit and finish. You're getting milled titanium scales. They're completely milled on the inside. It's fantastic. Um, this thing disassembled is, is really cool. Um, you're getting a really good steel. There are definitely some compromises on price. I can see where some of the savings are coming from. But for the most part, it's a stellar value. Significantly better than the James Brand uh, Barnes that I just reviewed for $50 more. This not even close. Uh, this knife, personally, having it in hand has impressed me much, much more. On to the neutral. First up is the blade finish. It's just a belt satin, kind of boring blade finish. I generally prefer like a, a mirror stone wash. Um, that's just my favorite. I like regular. I like regular stone wash as well. Um, but belt satin is probably one of my least favorite finishes. It's really not a big deal. I mean, it's not like it's a super, super low grit where you're seeing all these marks. Overall, it's pretty well done. Last thing on the neutral, I, I just wish the pivot were anodized to match the rest of the hardware. Um, again, Roosevelt bringing it up, but you know, purple pivot, purple um, screw, same thing, gray pivot, green screw. It, it'd be better if it were green to match um, on both sides, but just an opinion. On to the dislike. Two things here. One is there's no jimping on the uh, back of the blade right here or the back of the handle, which just makes it a little harder to grip sometimes. I really prefer there to be a little bit of jumping there. Again, this is all my opinion, but this knife without that jumping there, it's so slick. It's really not, I don't love it. <laughs> it's probably my, my least favorite feature of the knife, feature, uh, because we're about to get to something that is not a feature and that is the lock stick. This knife has lock stick. It's not horrible. It's not like Spidey Chef level lock stick, but it's there. And I'm not a huge, huge fan of lock stick. I really can't stand it actually. I'll try to pick it up on the mic real quick here, just so that you can um, maybe hear it. Maybe. I'll try to get it to pick up. If not, believe me, it's there. Overall, it is a fantastic knife, um, especially for the price. This is a really, really impressive folder from him. Um, this is his first holding knife. He normally makes fixed blades. His fixed blades are great too from the ones I've tried. But this is, for a first attempt at a folder, this is super, super great. Um, I really, really like this. And I didn't pick it up with the intention of keeping it. I thought it would be a little bit smaller than it is. But I actually really like the size. And uh, this may have a place in the permanent collection. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you later. Bye.